big truck, tell them where this plane going. Now as we land in the go Bay, it's like that, it's y'all. Like Coming that, from y'all. Jamaica, you know that it's a fact, and y'all. It's a fact, but y'all. truck in case Bay, now we rock and ride. Now we sipping on Bahama Mamas when we ride. Not only men observe, but men will sit and listen. A woman will tell on herself in more ways than one. However, ladies, you want to know what a man needs? Just ask and listen. Let him tell you, not what you think he needs, but let him tell you what he needs. And finances don't even come into the equation. Your education don't even come into the equation. Your degrees don't even come into the occasion. equation. Your house don't even come into the equation. Your accolades doesn't even come into the equation. But I guarantee you that man's gonna say respect, trust, love, patience, be my peace. Can you be my peace? Can you do that? Even a crackhead can sense this. Talking about everything. Feel me. If a woman really understands and knows who she is, she can walk in the room and take control of every man in the room. How she walks, how she sits, how she talks, how she thinks. We don't know how to be women. And we know how to do what women do. What do you think that was lost? For black women? Of course. Of course, you know we have in slavery. Because we had to diminish ourselves and our heart. Who we were as women was uh, became dangerous because we were just raped and violated. We were subject to what anybody else wanted to do with us. We watched our fathers and sons be hung. A woman can survive a rape, but a man can survive a hanging. Mm. For a mother to watch her son be hung, or her husband, or her father, and then have to not be able to say anything. So we lost our voice, we lost our dignity, we lost our majesty, and we lost our medicine. We lost it. You know, and it's those old grandmothers, those old church grandmothers that, you know, made us look good and did all of those things, teaching us at the table. I had these aunts, Aunt Lizzie, Aunt Alma, Aunt Dora, Aunt Nancy, and they were cigarette smoking, liquor drinking, card playing women who would get together on Saturday night, and I'm in the corner listening. I learned a lot. Two things I noticed about them. They always wore straight. They cussed and they smoked their cigarettes and drank their liquor. But the hoo ha was connected to the earth. <laughs> they always wore straight. They did not wear pants. And they all knew how to cook. Lizzie did the fish. Um, uh, Nancy did the hog maws. Alma did the this, the that, the other thing. And they all, I learned so much from those women. Where are women sitting around talking to them? And that's the thing, the things that we learned growing up. Where's that at? I remember <clears throat> my great grandmother, God rest her soul. I remember as a child, she always had this chair. She would put this chair in the kitchen and she would tell me to go sit in the chair. In order for you to learn how to cook, you're gonna watch me. You're gonna watch me long enough. Then you're gonna help me. You're gonna learn this is the way, this is how you learn how to cook. Because you're gonna become an adult and you gotta know how to cook for yourself. Cook for your family, your household. As a man. 
I mean, I mean, I think maybe that's why I love baking so much because she was a baker. She baked icing and cake from scratch. But the moral of it is, I was a watcher. I was that one that sat there and watched. And I listened. You see? So when, when again, as a man, even she taught me, get you a wife that know that that not only knows how to cook, but loves to cook. She loves to cook for her man. She loves to serve her man. She loves to, to cater to her man. She loves to take care of her man. She loves to support her man. She loves to be there for her man. She is his peace. She's his strength when he's weak. That's the type of woman you go after, son. That's the type of woman you marry. Okay, once again, the things that I saw growing up and listening, I thought I married that. I thought I had that when I got married for the first time. Okay, I did. I don't give up. But sometimes we have to go back. We have to reflect. And this is where this is what she's saying. As a child, this is what I saw. As a child, I listened to these things. As a child, I try to connect the dots. The way that teaches the young girl. Social media. But it's mean. It's mm -hmm. mean talking. I want you to search social media. I want you to search social media. I want you to search everywhere and find one place you've ever heard me speak against another black woman. A woman, period. Mm -hmm. I'll do that. Mm -hmm. I will pull up on her, have a conversation with her. You know? So one of the things that I'm doing this year that I, I you know, prayed about it and I committed to it. I'm going to do a rites of passage program. What's that going to look like? Well, I can't, I want women from all over this country and I know with COVID and money and everything. So we're going to do nine weeks online because a woman's training, her development is in alignment with her age. And every age of a woman has a lesson, has a blessing, has a gift, has a grace. Women don't know that. We know as, as indigenous women, Native American women, some African women. So there's the 20s as a clan. There's some things 20 year olds need as women to hear, to do, to master, to surrender. There's something 30 year old women need to grow, to heal, to learn. And if she didn't handle it at 20, now she's got her 20 issues in her 30. If she doesn't handle it at 30, they end up 40. Mm. That's why you got 50 year old women walking around acting like they're 30 mm. because they didn't handle their stuff. They didn't learn their lesson. They didn't master their gift. They didn't know their service. So I know those things. I'm old. <laughs> I know I look good. Go ahead, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'm old. And what about the, on the other side when, when we talk about? You know, women losing. What about men losing masculinity? Yeah, because I wonder if women have to show up, I guess, as you say, as men in skirts because the men haven't been men. And that's the thing there. She's beginning to, to shift now, you see. And that's the thing I do love about Ayala. So she don't just stick to one. I'm going to talk about one, but I'm going to also talk about the other two. And, and once again, you know, on this show, I want to keep it roughly a little bit longer because there's points to drive home. Well, men were raised by women. Mm -hmm. Hello? We're all out of order. But I'm not arrogant enough to tell a man how to be a man. I can help you heal. But then what you do with that has to go on your own. I can tell a woman how to heal. 
I can tell a woman how to be a woman. Sure. Why? Because I was taught, I was trained, you know? What my grandmother and my sister, my aunties taught me 70 years ago, you don't even hear that today. You don't hear about it. I don't know what, so my thing is I, I want to share this medicine, this information, this knowledge. And I think also too, to, um, as we close, you don't hear about the love and the romance in marriages and relationships. If you do, it's very few. Not to say it doesn't exist, but you you hear more about the negative. You hear more about, you know, here's the thing. There's can do's and won't do's. If you can't do something, you're able to learn. Just like the coach, the football coach and the athlete. If you don't know, you're coachable. Won't do's, you already know what to do, but you made a choice not to do. That's unacceptable. And more men are setting their preferences. There's nothing wrong with the man's preference. I don't know why a large number of women shame men for having a preference, but it's okay for a woman to have a preference. Here's the thing. You can shame, do whatever it is you're going to do. A man is still going to have a preference. Whether you like it or not, so get used to it. Just like a woman's going to have a preference. Period. End of story. But when it comes to happiness, this is where we have to be realistic and have a conversation. No one's having conversations. There's too many transactions going on instead of having a conversation. But then get mad at the results of those transactions instead of having a conversation when you should have had one. But again, you women, you must be careful of who's parking their car in your garage because you can let the wrong car park in your garage and it's going to be a long day. Men, be careful of the garages that you park in your cars in because you can park your car in the wrong garage and it will be a long day for you. Until then, the rest of this video is going to be on the description box. Shout out to the Breakfast Club for having Miss Ayana Van Zandt as a guest on this show. She really brings some strong points home. And I'm just sharing it here at the King's Table because that's what we do. As men, we spit fire and we get down to the roof. Until then, shalom.